Yeah, yeah. Hello, everyone. Hey, Mike. <laughs> hello, hello. Oh, I didn't get the blue shirt uh, notification. Sorry. Emma, yes. You, you got to fend for yourself on these say. things, Mike. It's not, do I don't do mind kind of standing out in a crowd. There you go. <laughs> I'll be the maverick. <laughs> not a problem. No, excuse me. Not a problem. Bruce, are you the host? Did you take the host? Of course. You are the host. Yes. Good job. Well done. Well done. Okay. All right. So, hey, uh, last week we showed a picture, a painting by Monet, mm -hmm. and it was of spring, and, and Mike <coughs> was rather doubtful that it was actually Monet, and it was. And then Bruce goes, well, I want to see an uh, um, AI with a is this style what, of Monet is this looking at dolly? a cell phone. Doing a do dolly, whatever it is, or is this the... Um, no, this is, this is what I typed into uh photor f-o-t-o-r oh, photor okay. i said i said do something in the style of monet oops i went back uh, i want to get back here okay sorry uh his spring painting with a person looking at a cell phone and this is what it came up with came up with two pictures or two paintings i guess here's her cell phone here and yep. and there's a she's on the phone and the little girl i don't know what what she wants so my question i don't even know if it's in the style of monet or not but it, um, it is somewhat Monet like it. Yeah, his color is right, but the but the 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 lines and the brushstrokes are all wrong. Okay, so it's typical AI stuff, I guess. No, but I'm not uh -huh. even sure that the place I went is is geared to do that. Now, this is here's the actual website that I went to, and here's what I told it to do down here, and this is what it generated. Yeah. Ooh, I can dislike it or like it. I like actually, I like both of them. I like, I like this one better. Yeah, but the question is, do you like it because it satisfied your request or do you like it because you just like it? That's, the, I guess, that there's an ambiguity with the concept of liking. Both, both oh. reasons. But I particularly like this one. So I yeah, might have it, to... Yeah, it is better. And the person's face one, and the other one is just a bit creepy looking. She looks like let's, she's a ghost uh, or something. Let's click generate again and we'll see what happens. What do you, when you first... Uh, so you, you get fast mode, uh, three fast modes, I guess. I'm down. I got one left. I already used two of them. So we'll see how fast it is. So the the, the best one I've seen so far for image generation is a program called Mid Journey. And you can, Mid -Journey. Give, some, you can give some pretty explicit uh, descriptions to it. And you can actually use GPT-4 to help generate optimum prompts for mid journey by feeding it all the documentation for mid journey and say, and then here's a bunch of sample things, the, what the kinds of things that I like to do. Now, I just want to pick a picture of some Vikings, um, uh, maybe a woman Viking doing a battle cry. So then it then generates this really complex creative description of all these things that they want to see in the mid journey picture and all the like the, the, the if you're doing like say a, a photograph thing, you could say I want it done with this style the style of this camera using this lens with this kind of lighting and this you know and it'll say wow. okay boom got it and it just comes up like it was a it was a photograph. It's just astonishing. Wow, that's cool. It's frightening well, and cool at the same time. <laughs> it, it is. All of this so, is both frightening and cool. It's frightening and cool. Well, Frighteningly cool. Take. There we go. A little bit of an oxymoron going on there. <laughs> I will. I can move this off to the side, and once it's done, I will bring it back, and we can see what it generated. But the real question, of course, is: Is Bruce happy? Because this is what he wanted. I, I, I'm always happy, John. That's my secret. <laughs> <laughs> or are always just not caring. That's my secret. That's <laughs> it's easy was, to be happy was, when you don't care. It's just, it's just that's exactly right. It's just it's much the same topic. I guess the one thing I was very uh, pleased about, amazed about, really, is that the clarity of this. It came in a high, really high resolution mm -hmm. image, and it looks super good on my on my large monitor. I mean, and, and that's one of the issues is, is if you've seen Monet's in the flesh, like, like at, at the uh, the Orangerie in in Paris, there's like mm -hmm. uh, this amazing gallery, and you're in there, and the the Monet flowers are like the water lilies are on the wall, and they are literally you know twenty feet tall and fifty feet long, and you're looking at this going, okay, there's no clarity to that, but it's beautiful. And what I'm seeing in this left hand picture 
is just the wrong style. It doesn't look like Monet at all. It looks airbrushed. Oh, it, looks it doesn't look like Monet. It looks exactly. airbrushed. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That could be. I got the, the other pictures came in. We'll take a look at those really quickly and then we'll move ahead. Okay. Look at this. This is way different. It seems way <laughs> different to me. Yeah, that's not Monet. Yeah. No. But it's still super sharp and clear. And I like yeah. both of those too. I mean, you know. You notice, you notice most that it's the hands. They struggle, the, the AI struggles with the hands. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> creepy. Yeah. Oh, with their hands. So, so AI have generated pictures. If you look at, if you look at hands. They get caught it's in a rice picking machine or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Terrible. Oh, it's, it's a very common. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, but if you just get them to generate like yeah, 20 or 30 uh, of them. That's pretty strange. Uh -huh. You see this one in there that you can use. It's pretty good, huh? Cool. All right. Well, we will move ahead. See, what, um, what we don't realize is when they're picturing people with the wrong number of fingers, they're actually picturing robots in the future where they have as many fingers as they want. That's what's going on. We don't realize sure. that they're prescient. I see. I just wanted to note, by the way, that, that um, we have a good group with us today, and you've picked a good day to come because this webinar is chock full of drama and pathos and... Controversy. Laughter and controversy, yes, and sorrow and just everything is mixed up here. So we want to see those likes come pouring in. We had a like before we even started, so that's how. I mean, that's, that's how so much people like it. This, this yeah. will be. <laughs> they, they anticipate that a, it's going to be likable. A yeah. like, I mean, a lot of people like you know they get thousands of likes. So they don't mean anything, but we yeah. treasure each and every like. This might be value four your or effort five. of clicking that it's mouse. Yes. Twenty percent of our likes is, can be one one like. So yeah, no, I mean, you just yeah. yeah if you want to get a high percentage of our love, then just click the like button. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Daniel Scott likes it. I mean. Yeah, so we're up to five likes now. We're we're cruising along. Thanks, everybody. Climbing appreciate the mountain. It. We appreciate, as Bruce said, every single one. We All right. Deeply appreciate it. <laughs> deeply appreciate it. Anyway, there's surprises galore upcoming, so let's get moving. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody out there in Clarion Live Land. This is the Clarion Live weekly webinar. See it and learn it and share it. This is webinar number 702. Uh, today is March the 31st, 2023. Clearing date, 81178. All webinars are recorded and available at www.clarionlive.com. By Please the way, the clarion today. date, John, is 81177. Sorry to tell 8 you. 81177. I'm off by a day. Okay. You're off by a day. Uh, but mm. it is, it's A78 in Australia already, Mike. Oh, yes, yes, right. yes, I know. But, but, but <laughs> Okay. Clarion date Australia in Australia. Is an exception to the general rule of the rest of the world no, at the no, moment. I, I feel like Clarion Knights in Australia and New Zealand looking at it going, yeah, yeah, 81178. They, they okay. made the effort to get up early. I feel like we can... We can do it as a token to them, respect, yeah, to, yeah. respect to them. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm willing to accept that argument. That's I'm, I'm a reasonable person. Can't I'm always flexible. be Seattle time, you know? I just want to point out, look, the drama is coming immediately. I mean, we got the conflict. We got it all today. <laughs> well, uh, no, actually, it came earlier because I said those pictures sucked and they didn't look like one A. So. <laughs> uh, well, that's, that's more of an AI conflict. That's not. Uh, anyway, uh, we are live streaming on YouTube. Nine people, seven likes. We are cruising right along. Thank you, oh everybody. Goodness. I know. Wow. It's remarkable. Here we go. Uh, we have hosts for today. John Hickey is here. Hey. Pepe Bruce Johnson is here. Pepe. And you may, you may say, what you may go, yeah. where did this Pepe yes. come from? What's where Pepe? did Pepe yeah. come from? That will be explained later in a surprise ah. twist in the webinar. Mm -hmm. The only Pepe I know is Senor Pepe. I don't think <laughs> that's is, what we're talking about. This is Pepe Bruce Johnson, okay? Okay. Here we go. If, if Bruce was a prawn. Uh, Andy Wilton is with us today. Well, uh, late. <laughs> Gosh, Andy is so darn popular. And then finally, Mike Hansen is with us today. Uh, it's, it's, I love having the one fan, but it would be nice if I could have as many fans as we've got likes and it just doesn't ever seem to transpire. You want to get up to 11? 11, 11 uh, I'd like 11 guys clapping for me. Oh, there we go. That's pretty ambitious. <laughs> I know, it is, but you got to have goals in life. You got, you got to dream big, baby. Got to okay. do it. Fair uh, enough. Rules of the webinar, all attendees immediately that means we can't hear you type your question in the question box. We need to present speaker and choose to type the question box. Finally, dress appropriately for the occasion and your social status. 
clothes should be modest and not overly ostentatious. I'm actually going to agree with this one. I think, I, I, although I have to admit, you should always have something about your outfit that somebody can remark upon if they just want to say something nice. But beyond yeah. that, yeah, I think this works. Well, this this rule wasn't really for you, Mike. It was for Andy. It, oh, oh, I see. Has it, has Andy transgressed? Has has he been uh, not looking acceptable yeah. lately? I don't, I don't wear the same colored shirts that I uh, uh, Yeah, but, but I'm not either today, Andy. Today, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm. Uh, Oh, as I think, it's the, they're it's not the wearing, ostentatious wearing the right part. There, there's I'm that wearing, attitude too. I'm, I'm, I'm right. Everybody else is wrong. I love yeah. that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. We'll move ahead. We have a feature presentation. We're going to be finishing, I think, the Clarion uh, well, Example app. We'll see. I, uh, Maybe. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Maybe. We'll, yeah. We will proceed onwards. We are co- working towards having it finished. If it's done today, it's done. But... You know, I, I have a mini presentation. This is part of the surprises. Huh? I have a mini cool. presentation that I'll do before you start here. <laughs> yeah, that's probably because, good. Because uh-huh. <laughs> we don't want to go all the way to the end. That, then that would be a surprise. I don't know. Anyway, it's a mini presentation. Mm-hmm. So there's a little twist already right there well, early so. on. I know. Uh, look at this, the slide change. Why? Because the early bird ended. It's over. It's done. It's the, over. The uh, pricing went up a modest 5%. You can certainly still register. Um, and the schedule is up. Most of the schedule is up, I will say. It's mostly there. Um, I've posted on, I haven't even posted all the ones that we have. I just got tired of doing it. And so I stopped. And uh, so pretty much everything's there except Thursday's not quite there. And there might still be some changes. So if you want to see what the presentations will be, you can go and take a look at any time. At www.cidclive.com. Uh, 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 where, John? Yes. 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 www.cidclive.com. <laughs> where, where, is, this, is this like the 1990s? Do we really have to put www in front of things? Do, you absolutely have to put the www. Can't you I, just I, say. I like the roller coaster ride of all just those say, up and down strokes. It's just so cidclive.com. Let's go to cidclive.com. What? W- I mean, w- 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 kick a, a deliver. Don't need to say it. B, you certainly don't need to type it. Uh, yeah. I feel like, or, why don't you just put the HTTPS in front, John? Like, go the whole hog. That's a good idea. Why okay, don't you do say, that. open your browser and then navigate to. Now, the do we have URL to say part. CIDC live or could we like be Sid Clive or something? You know, short. <laughs> go to sidclive.com. Sidclive. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Now you guys are just as being silly. Cicada, as in Cicada, said Clive. All right, a cicada so this, named like, Clive. That's what you're going to see it. <laughs> okay, so so anyway, um, we're we've met all of our goals, by the way, as far as commitments mm-hmm. to the hotel and such. So we're we're in quite good shape for the conference. Of course, we'd like to always have more. So consider coming, either online or in person. We would love oh, to see it. Just it's do it. Good. Well, yeah, I'd, I'd like the way you uh, think there, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> look at look at uh, the content you're getting. It's uh, it's it's saving you money. That's why I say you should check out the schedule. It's uh, it's pretty impressive, and uh, like I said, it's not even it's not even all the way done yet. So we'll see how that moves along. Okay, we are at announcements now. This is the fun part because ChatGPT has has uh, given us summaries of all of the of the. Uh, of the webinars that we've had this week. So I don't know that I'm going to read through all of them because it's a lot to read through. Anybody, um, if you see anything that's blatantly wrong, we can talk about it, but I think this one is fairly close. Um, visuals, yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah. okay. That's classes, email functionality, yeah. Been working on develops a better way to handle recurring events. Now, I wasn't sure what this meant exactly. Uh, I'm gonna say they I'm also sure mentioned that. the default cube being off. What's the what's the default cube, Andy? I don't, I don't have any idea what what we that spoke is. about oh, cube. cubes. Cubes. My guess is it's mis- mishearing. Yeah. Cube. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah, that Birmingham accent. We spoke. It's, well, it's really. <laughs> you should read the transcript. It has a lot of trouble with Andy. It's a lot of trouble. <laughs> Andy's um, a lot anyway. of trouble in general, though. So oh, yeah, what's, yeah, what's yeah, a surprise? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Um, yeah. Um, anyway. Not sure about that. Filtering, uh, recurring events. He did that. Date picker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just, they discuss a bug in their code that requires passing in a C string. I remember this part. I'm going to talk about it today, you. too. Yeah. yeah. Um, they demonstrate a media player using the G media plugin and provided blah, blah, blah. Okay. That's what happened. Pretty much. So and the they next did mention, one. Didn't mention that we've just got uh, the domain name Skynet AI for a laugh. That was cool, actually. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Andy has the domain Skynet.ai. <clears throat> um, I'm just curious uh, are you using um, Chat GPT 3.5 for this or GPT 4? Um, it's a it's a plug-in, and when you click it, it goes and loads up and kind of automatically selects it and ah, selecting okay. three point five at the moment. So I can't I I guess Not I sure. could get it into four, but it's tricky. I was just curious because apparently four is uh, is uh, brilliant. It can pass the bar. I can't pass the bar, and apparently yeah, well, GPT see, I'll, four I'll can see. get ninety percent in the bar. So. If I can set it to default to four, then I think it would be okay. But I haven't seen a way to do that yet. All right. Now, the open webinar, here's where things get interesting. Um, the webinar began with some introductory music and applause before the hosts, John and Pepe Bruce Johnson. Hi, Pepe. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, where does it get that us? from? I have no idea. <laughs> I can tell you where. I was wondering what, that myself, and it, it came to me this morning. It's because when I introduced you, I said, and here is the always peppy... Bruce Johnson, <laughs> and it took that, <laughs> it took that Pepe. as Pepe Bruce Johnson. <laughs> okay, okay. The always, the always Pepe okay. turned into That's, Pepe. Well, now, not now that intriguingly, that, yeah. that intriguingly means next Wednesday, I must, I must have an intro for you, John, <laughs> that we will see if Chet will take as a name. I don't know. All I know is that you've picked up a nickname, Bruce, and, and that there name is, is Pepe. Although, you know, Senior if Pepe. It, Pepe. If AI gives you the <laughs> name, is it really? <laughs> uh, various topics throughout the webinar, consuming API from Payment Gateway, generating the files, and using a media play engine. Media play engine? Do we talk about a media play engine? I don't know. All I know is that the host, John and Pepe yeah, Bruce we, Johnson, offered to help him and went through the steps with them, explaining each one in detail. In the first part, a viewer named Jeffrey... Yes, Pepe, Jeff. Pepe Bruce Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 really keen on that name, hey John. It's just John, but it, for me, it, it throws all three names at it. Uh, and, and I just have to point out something: your initials are PBJ. Uh, it's just like how could you not be <laughs> better than that? Yeah, I know. <laughs> the host and discussion media and play videos and audio files. Did yeah, we, what are, we yeah. did do that. Like we did, after you left. Yep, after you oh, left. Oh, because I left early. I had to leave early. That's right. Yeah, that's Pe right that's Pepe right. had to go early, so he wasn't. It doesn't say Pepe went early. Nah. No, it doesn't, doesn't know when you <laughs> left. It doesn't know that part. Um, yeah, anyway. There's one thing that's it's so missing, though. It's, 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 it's omitting the fact that I wasn't there. It should have mentioned that I met. It should this. have mentioned that yeah, for sure. Have, but mm -hmm. oh well. Oh my gosh. It's just, my stomach hurts now. All right. So uh, then there was a net talk user group meeting. And, was Pepe there? And, uh, I don't think I don't think Pepe was I there. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you who was there. John, the silent participant, <laughs> is asked. <laughs> no. Yes, because I introduced you. As John the, the silent. Ever silent, no, John the, the ever silent. silent John Hickey. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> it, very it true. Did and then there John didn't say anything in the intro because yeah. I had introduced him like that. I went straight to Ted. Okay, okay. So the meeting starts <laughs> with some banter and laughter, and then they introduce themselves. Bruce plays. They'll be doing Q&A session. Encourage the questions. Ted shares a picture of a visa. No, Ted didn't share that picture. <laughs> no, he didn't. That was mine. And it wasn't a beach house. It was a lighthouse. And a light bulb that he had and it was worked at lighthouse. No, I explained that I had a light bulb, but the, the it was from the lighthouse of the picture that we looked at. Clearly, yeah. you didn't. Ted shared a picture of a beach house. Oh, come on, you were he there. Didn't. Don't make don't make things <laughs> up. Bruce said, "Bruce says, 'I was pushed by the little sink pipe, which post notifications in Netweb dot Inc. and it's property of the web handler.' Okay, it, yeah, okay." Yeah, this is uh, fairly accurate. Sort, here, sort of, of close, mostly. sort of close. Yeah. yeah, there's some words in there that we did say. Um, 
<laughs> was I even asked to summarize this question? Nah, nah, you weren't asked to summarize nah. it. Anyway, the silent participant. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, anyway, there's P Web. They got that kind of right. This conversation intends to pre use CRDC. <laughs> CRDC. I think that should be CRDC. Yeah, yeah, they were talking about the um, CSS. It wasn't JavaScript. Yeah. We never, we never looked at JavaScript. We looked at CSS. Oh, that's true. That's completely wrong. Are you sure? I thought he, he didn't mention JavaScript. I do remember that. Nah, and then it but, ends with this. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, at this point, I wanted to show a little bit yeah. more AI stuff because here, here's a, another surprise twist in the webinar. Here is a. Okay, so we're going to look at, at something I came across. What I'm looking for is something that will take the transcript and break it into chapters for me on YouTube so that I don't have to necessarily be typing in the times and descriptions. I want this to do it for me. And so far, I haven't found anything that will put in the time stamps on it. I keep searching for it. If anyone comes across one, let me know because that would make it a whole lot easier, or at least as a double check to see that I got the times right. But in the, in the YouTube transcripts, it does have timestamps and the timestamps should be able to relate to the topic and it should be able to figure it out. But I haven't figured a way yet to do that. Um, however, when I was searching, I came across this assembly AI. And assembly AI is an API that uh, you could call from Clarion that will do transcriptions of audio and video for you. And not only that, let's see, you can scroll down here, blah, blah, blah. I'm not quite sure what all this is about. Yeah, you can use it for documentation, video tutorials. It'll walk through, uh, it'll go through YouTube videos and that kind of thing, right? So here, transcribe and analyze audio with AI models built on the latest research. And this is all API generated, so you can use Clarion and you could call this and have it transcribe something for you and send back results and it sends them back in JSON. Okay. Mm. So I thought that was kind of neat. I mean, we can put APIs, we can put AI stuff in our apps if we wanted to, uh, at least this particular thing, but this is all it really does. So it does this core transcription thing and it does audio intelligence and it has all sorts of different stuff it'll do. Sentiment uh, analysis. Ooh, I like that. There. Yeah, exactly. More so people that, need to have person... that built into their into their natural <laughs> intelligence, I think. <laughs> were they upset? Were they not upset? <laughs> okay, so I went in and I tried it and I took the transcript from the open webinar and I had to transcribe it. So that is here on this page. It does a better transcription job than YouTube, which you would hope, right? that it does a little bit better job. And so this is this is the full transcript here. And it's pretty it's pretty accurate I think as far as understanding what people said. Yeah. So I'm what it doesn't about do about lighting and that kind of thing. What's interesting is that it, it can't distinguish between so take that one paragraph yeah you got what? some backlights here. You just took the lights right. off your makeup mirror. So you said the first bit yeah you got some backlights here. And I said, you just took the lights off the makeup mirror. And it's interesting that it's put there together in one paragraph as if one person said it. Yes. Mm. That would be nice if it broke the people out. Now, it could be the things that I chose as well, because there's there's like, I don't know, 12 choices you can make as far as what it can do with the transcript. And so, but you only pick like one at a time and I was just kind of playing with it. Yeah. So the thing that I chose though, was they always do this part here. But then I chose auto chapters because I wanted to see if this would do chapters the way I wanted it. But it doesn't put the timestamp in, but it makes these little chapter headings. Now this this has your name in it here. Hmm. Sure. On this side. How to make a valid SSL connection. Bruce, let's see how you, you generate the digest, convert the JSON. It just kind of summarized a section over here, right? where you've explained a lot more than what this Although is, but we, these are we, summaries of things. Yeah, I mean, we weren't talking about a valid SSL connection that had nothing to do with anything. Yeah. We were talking about a cyber source API connection. Um, I'm, I'm not saying this was really super accurate. It was kind of interesting, though, that it does this kind of a deal. So if you're listening to a, a lecture or something or an audiobook, it'll break it down into these chapters. But the thing I liked about this is the end. If we get to the end, exporting Skype to WebView 2. What's this? 
Oh, this is, um, I was talking to Andy about WebView. I don't know what Skype has to do with it. Probably oh, because Skype, you dropped it I into Skype. Skype. You yeah. <laughs> Skyped it to me. So they ended up putting that as your headline there. Web 1.2 in two minutes. Mm. That sounds evocative. You shouldn't get no Doesn't script it? and errors because <laughs> WebView 2 is bang up to date. There's Andy for you. <laughs> 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 Use an IE mode, get rid of the cache, and we're back to exactly what we expect to be. Okay, well, fair enough. But the cool part, the best part, is this. Andy's farewell speech. Oh, no. All right, everybody, we're leaving. Say goodbye, Andy. You did it. Thanks for coming. And thanks for everybody who contributed and asked questions. We'll see you later. Andy's farewell speech. How did this sum up is that? I have no Exit idea. Exit stage left. <laughs> but, but I certainly like the, like the headline there. The summary that was, I thought that was uh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Setting up setup builder. I don't know. It's an interesting thing. I think it's got some work but uh, to do, but... <laughs> I just kind of like the summaries. Now, the only other thing I would point out here is the pricing, which is is point zero 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 two five per second to do your basic transcriptions, and there's a little bit more to do this audio intelligence. And see, this might see this has entity detection if you pay the extra, so that might actually break it up to so it knows the different people, right? Possibly, yeah. I, I would guess that's what that would be, and, and a whole bunch of different analysis things. that just. Blows yeah. my mind. Yeah. <laughs> Set of an analysis. <laughs> he does it. He, he's he not serious. He can tell he's lying. You look at the tells. But I think <laughs> if I did the math right, uh, that this is about 45 cents, 50 cents for an hour and a half hmm. YouTube video or something. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Pretty inexpensive. So, anyway, I just I thought I'd bring that to everyone's attention. I thought it was very, it was pretty interesting. And, um, there you go. So you can play with it, or maybe I'll play with it a little more, and I'll let you know what I find out. Now, something you might want to try, uh, there is a, like a point form summarization you can ask for to just say, you know, uh, convert this text into bullet points, and it'll summarize it down, and that might do a better job hmm. of, uh, of uh, doing things. But again, yeah. uh, I, I, I'd say check to see if you're using GPT-4 or, or, or chat GPT-3.5, because there's a significant oh, that. difference, you know. Okay, I will do. It's a, certainly been an interesting journey so far, just learning about all these different things people are doing. But I did think this this idea of having API, yeah, API yeah, stuff absolutely. was, uh, I mean, not maybe for this, but I'm sure there's other things. And it's just a matter of us kind of expanding our thoughts a little bit, right? And seeing what our programs can do as far as interfacing with this. Um, the, um, okay, go ahead. The zip, I'm just saying, John. Don't get too excited because I've got the newer version here, but the zip I've just sent you, um, I've got the OpenAI class in there. Oh, there you go. See? So you're so, you're letting us call ChatGPT from there. Is that what yes. it is? The OpenAI There's thing? The various different endpoints, yeah. Does it ask for the, uh, for like like I subscribe, so I have a key. Uh, key. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah, I ask for, for the key and too. then you... Oh, you can do your completions. You can do the chat where you form no, the history. Uh, but it also lets you query the um, what the capabilities are. So you query the what do they call them? The models, and then it gives you the models capabilities and permissions. And then you select your model and say, "Okay, off you pop. Give me uh, uh, give me the answers to this." And it'll do the imaging, but you haven't got the imaging at the moment. I could I could um, I could share a. Well, it's not a secret, but it's. It's something Bruce and I are working on. It's something Bruce and I talked about working on, but we haven't worked on it yet. When you say we're working on it, I mean you're working. Up with when it. I say we, I, I mean to do the work. Yeah, yeah. I was still waiting for that too, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> where's, 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 where's the work? Where is it? Where's the work? Where's the work? Here's here's. Uh, do you mind if I I mention it? Because I do think it's no, no, go for it. Go for it. Okay, so uh, the idea is, you know, you know how Bruce has the. Um, uh, J files thing on the web where you can just paste in JSON code and it will tell you all these mm -hmm. different things. Yeah. Okay. What we're aiming to do, when I say we, I mean Bruce, is to have the similar type of thing, but take the chapters from YouTube and just paste that whole big chunk into 
a web browser, I guess. And then behind the scenes, we'll break that down into individual lines with individual links and put that on Clarion Live so that each session that we do will have chapter links to it that if you click on them, we'll go right to the video and right to the section. Hmm. And it'll make it easier to search for things as well. Very I cool. think because you can search for it right in Clarion Live. Cool. Yeah. And to, just for... for um a reference and again coming down to this whole chat GPT four thing, you can you can actually prime it. You can sort of say, okay, uh, what I want you to do is take this thing and summarize yeah. it, but include time markers. And then if you give it, you know, for example, and then you actually give it some examples of what you'd like it to look like, it will actually try to write its stuff based upon your examples. So you can basically teach it. Here's how I want to see it. Please do it this way, and it, and it will follow that lead. Now, the trick is that I, I can get a transcript with the timestamps in it. Yeah. Um, the, the plugin that I've got right now doesn't send the timestamps over. Understood. But what you could but do is you could take that description and then put the timestamps ma manually in and then use that to train chat G or uh, GPT-4. Um, okay. Yeah. Just say, please make it look like this. Here are some examples. And just go bang, bang, bang. And right. So the timestamps have to come over with the transcript. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Do right. they not? And the right problem... Now? Well, no, no, right now they don't. The plugin I use doesn't do it. But the oh, okay. plugin has some way around the length limitation. If I just copy and paste mm. into ChatGPT the entire transcript, it says this is too long and it won't do it. Oh, there's, there's ways to get around it, but you have to kind of break the transcript up mm. and tell it this is part one, this is part two, this is part three, and then it will remember all of them, then it will go from there. But somehow this plugin just dumps the whole thing in and it, and it, uh, and it works. So. Interesting. Uh, maybe I'll just ask the guy with, who did the plugin if he can include timestamps. Maybe they'll take care of it. They uh, farm it up. Okay. Anyway, uh, that's probably enough AI talk for today. Maybe. Because <laughs> we still have you guys to do and I have my mini presentation to do. So I'm just going to jump into it because it's just right here. And this will really only take about five minutes. But I think it's... Uh, I've been actually, it's been a mini series, Mike, because I, I started with Noantis and I showed it there and then I showed it on the open webinar. Oh. And then I talked about it yesterday just a little bit, didn't I? I think I just, did. Just and teasing then, it out a little bit at a time, right? <laughs> and then here we are. <laughs> That's right. Well, if you, if you could arrange to make it go on for 90 minutes, John, we could just, you know, punt the, no. uh, the invoice example onto the next week. <laughs> no, I don't want to take up too much time, really, because I do want you guys to do to do more work on your stuff. But this will be very short. Um, what it is, you're familiar with everything. Mike, do you use everything? I do use do everything? everything, yes. You no. use everything? Andy mm -hmm. uses it. Bruce had no idea what it was. And <coughs> I've been using it myself from time to time. All right. So I was doing some work on um, just a, a hobby program. And I needed, I wanted to get folders and all of the um, files that are inside of a folder, right? And I know I can do that but it was too much thinking for me. I didn't, want to, I didn't want to think really hard about it. So I was looking around first to see if there was a template somebody had done or if there was code that I could just grab that would do all, do all this stuff, did the recursion and threw it all into a queue or whatever, right? When I was doing the search though, I came across Void Tools and they've got a Clarion example, which is, this is everything. This is where the everything come from. Uh, that interfaces example with everything. In Void Tools? Bizarre. Yeah. I know, right? Look at this. Here's the SDK, support C, C Sharp, Clarion. Here's all huh. the, the API calls. Curious. Uh, I Python wonder and who Visual in the Basic. world <laughs> created I this thing. Don't know. I they didn't put their name <laughs> wow. on this anywhere. I have not been able to find the name or a source Curious. for this at all. Um, but yeah, they they created an everything DLL. Here's the lib and here's all the things that are included. It does not include all of these things. But uh, I guess the most used, I guess. Yeah, I mean, there might be some things in here that might be useful, but these are what's included in this DLO on the lib. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the whole example is here. <laughs> so I went through this, I go, this is remarkable. Because <laughs> like you said, you don't see this too much when you see no, all yeah, these other things. Unusual, yeah. Yeah, so I was pretty excited about that. Curious. So anyway, so here's, uh, that's the prototypes. Here's the equates. Um Everything must be running for this to work, which makes sense because interface into everything. Yeah. Uh, you can only do one search at a time. And he was talking about making a thread safe 
it for whatever reason. Here's the descriptions of all of the methods that are in here that we can use, all the calls. Da -da -da -da. I'm sorry, I'm going to scroll down here quickly. Okay, so here's a couple examples. Um, okay, so what it does is it fills in a group with the, in, with the data that it gets from everything. And so this is the group definition here. And you can see this, this is all the stuff that's returned. So you get last right dates, you get creation yeah, dates, yeah. you get all this kind of thing. Um, here's a fast program example. Basically what this means is that none of this is returned. Okay. All right. Now I don't know, you know, time-wise how much faster, what you're saving really. I've only been working with this example, which is a detailed program example, because I've been getting all of this information back. And it okay. tells you how it comes back to you. And then here's the code, and it's very short. I mean, you just have to do a couple calls, blah, 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 and you get the address. This is where it's coming from, everything DLL, and then it pops it into the result group, and then you can do whatever you want to with it. So what I've been doing the past few days is putting this into a class and a template so that people can just use this thing without having to worry about knowing even this much about it, right? Yeah. So that's over here. So here's a, a everything demo app that I put together. Is this open everything? Let's. Uh, let's get the ink in here too. Okay. So Andy and I actually went through this on uh, Wednesday, didn't we? Yes. Uh, yeah. We uh, we just yeah. get some stuff about the searching. Uh, the, uh, the the cues. Right. So this is the class. So it's got all the equates in it. I don't really want to spend a whole lot of time in here. Here's the group that we defined. We defined a queue. So we could fill up a queue. Um, and then these are all the just calling the everything methods, basically. They're named exactly the same as the ones in everything. And then get results is a new one. And then search is a new one that we wrote. And it just gets results for you. So I'll just run the demo. Show you what it does. All right. So I thought I would look and see where clarion.exe is. So here's everywhere in my hard drives that clarion.exe is. <coughs> nice. And of course, yeah. because you're querying from everything's pre built database, it's very fast. Exactly. I mean, that just popped <coughs> right in there. Now I was looking for um, ultimate SQL. And that's everywhere. <laughs> a lot of these are backups. These are all backups. And when I was, it's, um, mm -hmm. it still exists on my drive. There's an E drive, more backups. Yeah, I just so this shows, a lot. This shows, so to be clear, this shows you everything everywhere and, and it's all at once. Everything, everywhere, yes. all at once. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Except, that, I mean, yeah, that's what the demo without does. Without the martial arts, though. There's, there's <laughs> no fighting in this version. But, I mean, it does what I wanted it to do. It gets me the pass and it gets me everything inside of it. And then I can, you know, kind of go from there. Because you can set an entire path and then it will just look within that. Right? It won't just look for the name. It will look for the path and do whatever. So uh, as far as code-wise goes, and this will end our demo, basically. There's a um, class declaration there, or the object. It's ultimate everything, so you can't do any more ultimate ultimates after this because <laughs> yeah, it's ultimate yeah, no. everything. Sorry, guys, it's all done. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is you it. Know, John, that, that, that's too much for me. Can I just have the penultimate everything I want? Like, <laughs> just like ease it back a bit, can you? Just back it up. Okay, so this is this is all the code that's in here. I I probably should have plopped this down into a routine or a procedure, but. I just put it in the embed just because I was just doing it. So I made a queue called everything, and there's the name that's going in there. Uh, UE search does all the work for you. Search this is the entry field. And then you're going to end up with this. All the results end up in this UE.Q results, and then you just loop through it, and I assigned it and added it. That's it. You know, you, you could put your list on the screen straight from the queue class. Uh, the, queue, uh, the class queue. You could, yeah, I you know. But I was to do that. I haven't spent a lot of time on it, and it's one of those things where I didn't want to think about it, so I just did this. I just I just made it work just so I could demo it for you guys today. I am thinking of a few other ways to do things too, and we can uh, we can look at it again on Monday. 
And, and it's interesting that, that you did this, John, because just by pure coincidence, two weeks ago today, I just wrote a class to do directory crawling because I was sick of having <laughs> to just scratch my head every every time I had to do a directory call because every single, every time I do it, it just feels weird, and I wanted I know, something that you. felt felt more felt better. So so so, so I have a proposal here. Um, uh -huh. it, it, I could uh, just show you guys use today's webinar to show you that class. I like essentially recreate it before your very eyes. And the nice thing about it, of course, is it doesn't require everything to be installed and running. It just right. it's, it's clearing code just down from here, and and uh, and uh, and then we could skip the invoice thing for next time. Is that something we want to do? Just because we're you know the iron's hot, we could strike it now and call it. Yeah, down. I'm good with that. <laughs> On topic. Yeah. Yep. That no, sounds good. This is a surprise twist in the show. Yes, Look yes, this. this is. I, dun, 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 dun. I didn't, you. didn't see this coming, did we? <laughs> I didn't see it coming. But uh, so, yeah, it's very exciting. So I'm cool. telling you, and not only is it that really exciting, but we have 11 viewers and 12 likes. That's how exciting this is, Mike. That's pretty, that, <laughs> that, that's uh, that's what I'd call inflation right there. Yeah. Wow. Okay. No, that's great. That's fantastic. Cool. So, That'll be fun. Just well, in that case, gents, you can you can uh, Bruce and, and and Andy, if you want, you can uh, hang around or uh, take a break. I may take a break actually. I'm gonna hang it's around. Been a long day. When this pinch back up. Mm. So oh, there you go. <laughs> well, hang out with friends. There you go. All right. Well, well, Mike, we'll you see you, Bruce. The screen, I think. I will do that. Let me just uh, go share a screen. I'm telling you. Yes, I'm telling you. This do. webinar, it's just been an emotional roller coaster. Just John, make yourself down. a host. I let you do that so you can leave, right? All right. So we're not doing the invoice example now, and uh, Carl to... will be disappointed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know what? Carl's one of these guys. He loves all code, so he's gonna like this. He, he'll enjoy it, uh, and uh, and I'm sure he'll uh, I'll get a kick. Well, this out is of good it. because it's it's really what I was looking for in the first place because I didn't want to write this stuff over well, and over, that's and over again. I'm just trying to get rid of. Uh, and, and you're right. If you don't have everything, then this doesn't work at all. So oh, exactly, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just trying to get some stuff off my screen on the other side here, so that I can uh, uh, make use of stuff as we need. Okay. Uh, oh, and uh, what is this up here? Oh, this is the. Uh, this is not what I wanted here. Okay, so we are going to create a new solution. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, let's create a new solution, and let's just call. It's going to be a Windows EXE just for fun. Uh, Oh, da, da, da. and uh, let us, uh, I don't know, we'll put it over here um, for now. I can always move it somewhere else later. Uh, and we're going to, um, the name of this thing is going to be, I don't know, well, let's call it directory crawler, crawler example. Just write an example program. Uh, and we'll let it go ahead and create the uh, directory. Uh, now, what we'd like to be able to do is we'd like to be able to say, let's go, look what's in the in either the current folder or a subfolder or whatever and we want to do something with files in this uh, in this place maybe we want to make a list of files maybe we want to uh, delete all the files that are found we want to be able to apply a map maybe apply a date uh, criteria this is the goal of this thing is just say just go look what's down there and just just tell me what's there <clears throat> One thing that the, the class that I wrote doesn't do is it doesn't just say, just go get me a queue. So if you want a queue, you just have to say, fine, uh, I can do that. And that's something we could extend to make it do that. But uh, but that wasn't in the original spec. The original spec was, was uh, created because what I was trying to do was delete files from a variety of different log folders and subfolders and PDF temp files that were generated by reports. And, and we had all these files just sitting around and we discovered they weren't all being cleaned up properly. So we wanted some facility that could just say, go find all those files in various different directories. And then we want to delete them or whatever. In some cases, it was find a file. Is this file being used in an email that hasn't been sent yet? Ah, oh, okay. In that case, we don't want to delete the file. So there was some logic we wanted to apply as it went through. So that was that was the initial intent of the thing. And and mostly I just didn't want to have to do another directory call if I could help it. So that was uh, just trying to encapsulate the complexity of that. So let's go ahead and create a class to do this. So we want to call some class. Let's just say we're going to include a class. We don't we haven't written the class yet, but let's go ahead and write some code to do it. So we're going to call a directory crawler crawler dot ink. 
And that's what it looked like. And then let's go ahead and create that uh, standalone file. I'm going to create a member file and we'll just save that and we'll put it right here directory crawler dot ink. And there, and of course, any good class should have a class header. And so we need a, we, of course, we've got this lovely name here. So we'll call it directory. I'm going to get good at typing this by the time we're done. Class and a class, because it's just a class, it's going to be a type. And we could have used the, the Clarion Live class creator, but let's just go ahead and talk about each of these sections here. It's going to have a module. It's going to be called directory crawler.clw. And it's going to have, we're going to say, let's link in this module. Uh, it's the same thing as we have over here. So I'll just copy this. <coughs> Uh, and we should have it uh, conditionally done. So um, include file, and ABC uh, include, what is it, ABC lib, what in the world is it here? AB file, I think I've forgotten what it is. Um, link. Did I open up? Yes. So why didn't it find a link for me here? Let me get rid of the Zoom name here. Oh, line, link. So that's what I wanted. So we'll just have a piggyback on the ABC stuff for now. So if you're uh, creating an ABC application, it'll automatically link it if it's in the base module. Uh, if it's not in the base module, it'll say, hey, it's actually in a DLL somewhere. So that's the whole point of those two things. That's our class line. Now, what would we like this thing to do? Well, we wanna be able to say, go hunting, please. Go go start searching for files. So let's just have a nice little method name. Let's call it process. Process, we don't call it method, it's a procedure. Um, where do we, what do we want to process? Well, we have to call, uh, we have to be able to pass in a folder that we want to search for. And we want to be able to pass in a mask that is going to kind of files you're looking for in this folder. Um, and uh, maybe we'll have a, a cutoff date. So let's go before date. Oh, sorry, long, long. Before date. And um, do we want this thing to automatically recurse down through subfolders? So let's put in a thing here, subfolders too. Okay, nice simple call to say, I just just go look look for files in this place. And of course, we'd like defaults for all these things. So if we don't specify the folder, it'll assume the current folder. Well, that's fine. If we don't specify a mask, it'll assume start at start. If we don't specify a before date, then it's all files. And if we don't specify subfolders too, then it's just the current folder. So we can just make those all optional. So if you just want to say process, please, boom, shoots off, does it. So that's a nice thing to have. Mike. Yeah. <clears throat> Yes. I have a I have a question for you here. Certainly. Yeah. I I go back and forth on this, but mm -hmm. with the procedure with with parameters, yeah. right? I mean, there you've got four parameters, which maybe isn't that bad, but you might get up to six or eight or ten. You can get up to a lot of parameters. Sure. When is it better to set properties before you make a call like that like this? So As I opposed normally, to setting parameters. So let me let me say right up front, I'm breaking my own rule here because my rule is normally if it's three parameters, that's okay. Four is like, eh. but when I think of if we look at, for example, the directory, uh, the directory thing here, uh, it has that uh, one, two, so just three parameters there. Um, so, um, so even the directory thing has three, I, I added the four because I had this extra concept. <clears throat> I could actually do it as some kind of initialization or, or individual things. And, and the nice thing here is we could, because it's a class, we could say, what is our folder? And, uh, you know, is a string, um, file max, where is this, sorry, file max directory. What I want, hold on, no, that's not it. File colon. Why does that keep disappearing when I hit the colon? Max path. There we go. So we could do that if we want to. But the, the issue with that is then they have to um, set all those things and then call the process rather than just calling the process with those things on a single line. So it's. Yeah, I understand that, but you still have to set the parameters. And it, to me, it feels clearer to look at a at a property that says what it is, and then there's a value after it, rather than looking at a whole string of, of parameters being sent over that don't say what any of them are or what any of them are doing. 
No, especially granted, if you have okay. a bunch that go like true, false, false. Sure. Some name. You know, you don't. You. you I don't know. To me, I, I feel Good. like I'm really leaning toward the whole setting yeah. properties and thing as opposed to parameters. Well, well, the one issue you can run into if you do it that way is let's say that you you set up these parameters and then you call this thing. And then it starts shooting off and looking at stuff. And then you change the before date in the middle of it processing through the files. And suddenly it's not considering before date anymore the way it was when it was supposed to when it started. So you could potentially break things by reaching inside and fiddling with stuff while it's happening. That's one potential downfall. Whether that's being over conservative and, and over cautious is, uh, is, uh, is, is another matter altogether. But the, the interesting thing uh, is that many of these parameters that we passed in on this process call, I immediately turned around and set as internal variables in the function or in the class. Yeah. So I already kind of sort of did half the work anyway when I was doing it because I was just having them as parameters for convenience just because we like parameters, but I'm happy enough to, uh, to sure. leave those out as well. Uh, and we could also, for that matter, have it, uh, if they don't pass it, if, if you set it beforehand, then you can set it beforehand, or if you pass it in as a prompt, then it says, oh, you specified the prompt for that. Well, I'll just store that for you, so you can, now we can do it either way. So I like that. Um, so, um, then Bruce has <laughs> this concept of a, of a start where it clears everything out, you know, or sets everything to defaults, and then yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you feel about that. Me the wrong way. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and it makes sense to me as well. But yeah, 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 he yeah. just likes to do start for whatever reason. And and and, and, and sure, we can throw something like that in. We could have a start procedure. Here. Okay, there I don't go. want to get sidetracked um, too much. It's just no, one it's of those fine. No, I it's, it's easy enough to do. It's not a problem about. to do at all. Okay, so we have that and mask and this and that. Okay, so there we go. Is Andy still? I don't know if Andy's still here or not. Uh, yeah. Well, he's uh, he's on screen well, like he's not on screen but he's he's still in the no, webinar i'm here i'm here I'm okay here. yeah we had this discussion kind of yesterday or a couple of days ago looking at the uh, search where we had parameters after it and then i was just thinking should these be properties that i'm setting or should they be parameters and so that's kind of why i'm having this discussion because i'm trying to decide which way to go on that andy so i, I don't know if, I I don't know if you had any input on it <laughs> i am you can hear me, can't you? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You're yeah. dropping in and out I, I, a little bit. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I personally have. Um, make sure I'm on the right mic. Logitech and Logitech. Yeah. I personally have properties for, um, like definitely global and for stuff which are good defaults and you don't really need to change. But for something like the search, I don't know whether you'd want to have it working in default mode if you didn't pass them in, and but you can explicitly set them um on a on a per search basis that kind of thing so i do have properties um but the the the, the more you don't have to go and change them too often if that makes sense you've got right. the power to change them but you don't need to uh to to basically change them too often but for something that you would want to like say maybe do one search have a good set of defaults it always uses uses them uh but if you do override it you could you could pass them in as a parameter that would be my take on it. Okay. The reason I came across is because, there's, you know, we saw just like a couple of things. We only had like three parameters to begin with, but there's really like a whole bunch of things you can set. And it was getting, I was thinking, this is going to get to be, you know, eight or nine yeah, or ten want, parameters. Yeah, that's too much. Too so I think I might go with properties on that. Okay. That's, yeah. that's kind of what I wanted to know there. So cool. Okay, so the start one is just going to say self dot folder equals dot or something, or just just leave it blank. And self dot mask. So you're going to go with the start, even though you you don't like it that much. Um. Well, yeah. Fine. I, I'm just saying whatever. I don't care. <laughs> We're just writing <laughs> some code here. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't. I, I didn't know the difference between using start and init. To be honest with you, why, uh, start why is init just, wasn't okay. Well, init is the, and I, I understand why Bruce used the word start because he's not saying I want to reinitialize. He is saying I want to reinitialize you, so I could accept reinit uh, as a concept. But he's basically saying I want to start again, so he just used start. Use the start. Yeah. yeah, I've always found it. You know, I I would actually prefer being being reinit, but. Uh, Hey, whatever. Maybe that's a weird word. So uh, it really doesn't matter. It's whatever word you want it to be. 
Okay. Um, well, so, as a nod to Bruce, we can use start. How's that? Sure. Okay. okay. So for now, let's just go ahead and uh, and have these like this here. Uh, subfolders too. I'm not sure what we're, we're going to probably end up on going false. Um, mask. This is probably going to be start off star. Uh, but uh, for the folder, yeah. I'm, let's, we'll just leave that like that for now. <clears throat> so. Uh, and if we say process, then we don't do start there, but we do want to deal with these parameters. So we're going to say if not omitted uh, folder, and then we're going to just have all these th same things down here. Folder equals folder. Um, and then we're uh, going to do something similar here. Where we're going to say that, uh, that, actually, you know what, Let's, you should do like this here now. Uh, and then we'll just go ahead and go mask, before date, before date, folders, folders there. And because this is really noisy looking to me, I'm going to go to the longest of these and then say then, there, and go up to this one, make the same, then, I like this much more. Then, I'm a stickler when it comes to things looking like they're not going to blow my face up here. I don't like looking at noise. There we go. Didn't that pretty? I like that a lot more. Um, okay. Carl's, so, Carl's got some, uh, he's in the yeah. chat. He put a chat thing in. Okay, let me find the chat. Chat. He's trying okay. to save you some time. I can open his mic and he can explain it. There you go. Yeah, I suppose by the time we go in and grab all that stuff and tweak it to to do our needs here, it's uh, it's. And by the way, Carl, I actually have my actual class over here on the side, so uh, so I'm going to be copying and pasting to some extent uh, to make all this thing work. Yeah, I was just talking about the the program to show a list with the the files to see it is oh, okay. Uh, okay. maybe your directory call the the test of the class. So, but go ahead with. Okay, that's fine. But thanks. Uh, okay, and of course I like using equates, so I'm just going to throw a couple of equates up here uh, it, because I'll be specifying these things multiple times, and I just want to make sure that I do it right every time. So I just use equates for those, uh, which means that instead of doing star dot star here, we're going to do that. Uh, now. Uh, so we have the processing thing, uh, and what we're going to do is. We've got all of these setting parameters, but what we need to do first of all, so we have to say if um, self dot mask equals blank, uh, then mask self dot mask, and I could I may end up chasing that one above eventually to do that, but uh, uh, I'm uh, I, I think I like this done at two steps because of the first four lines here are all do we have omitted parameters or not? And then I go on to, now let's make sure the parameters make sense. So if, if the mask is blank, then the mask is equal to all mask. And then we also have to check to say, uh, da, 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 da. okay, now we have to uh, do a couple things here. So what I want to do is I want to um, uh, specify a folder that I'm going to be searching. And, uh, and in my example that I've got here beside me, I've just defined this like this. And, uh, and I just noticed C string, if we're doing a, a file path like that, let's just check back here. Uh, okay, here was a string, but now let's make it a C string plus one. And this is going to be start. Let's change this to be start folder. I like that more. Well, and you know what? I'm going to leave it as folder here. Well, maybe not. Start folder. Um, yeah, I like start folder more. Because there's going to be, there's, as it's going down through the folders, I want there to be able to have some way to distinguish between what's my starting for folder versus my current processing folder, that kind of concept. Uh, so start folder. So let's just go back and update our example here. Folder, 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 folder. And then just tidy just a touch. 
So with that, and then the next thing I need to do is we have to take a look and say, um, what is the current folder uh, that we're going to be processing in? So if, and actually, you know what, this might end up being the same start folder here. So if the folder is blank, then we want to use the current path. So we're going to say if start self dot start folder equals blank, equals blank, then we're going to set start folder uh, equals path. And so dot start folder equals path. There we go. Log path. Do you want to use path or long path? Because I, I have trouble with path once in a while. Yeah, we can use long path. It's fine. Um, and then, oh, we'll go ahead. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was going to say sometimes you got to put quotes around it because there are spaces in long paths. But well, that would be if you were doing a run, would... but not on a directory. Not on a Correct. directory, it's yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it so right there. Yeah, yeah. I, in, I in the uh, everything class, I had to put quotes around it. Otherwise, it didn't work. Uh, and then just to double check, I want to. I, I, I'm I, in my own little class here. I settled on the concept of saying that um, uh, that a folder, uh, the folder had to be equal to um, uh, what's it called? Uh, star folder. Start folder. Did I call it star folder elsewhere? No, it's right there. Okay. Um, so if the right character of the start folder. So maybe I'll do this here. So if the right character of the start folder is not a backslash, then I want to append a backslash to it. I, I have a request. Yeah. I feel like I'm being a pest today, Mike. No, I, I like pests. <laughs> pests are awesome. That's I feel like. I don't know. Um, I would... When, when we well right now you're not you haven't actually used it but the the f that's a c string up there i don't oh, yeah. know what that f is I don't and need when that i try anymore. to look through code yeah you don't even need it but the single letter variables i agree and i only use them when I, when it's very localized but even in that normally unless it's something like x or n and it's obviously a counter then I, I I sometimes use single letters, but in most cases I actually use full names. And in this in for in this particular day, I happen to be at my sister's house, in her kitchen with her, peppering me with questions that were completely not programming related. Uh, so I was kind of breaking a few of my own normal rules just because <laughs> so my brain was only so capable of doing that. <laughs> so, um, so all we're doing here is just within the construct of our of our um, little class here. Whenever we're talking a directory folder, I'm just making sure it always has a backslash on the end, so I can just append a file name and be done with it. So, so that was just the standard that I chose to do within the class. Has no bearing outside because if you wanted to pass in dot. It'll just go, oh, fine, that's dot backslash, whatever, cool. Um, and, and it deals with that accordingly. Mike, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, lines 13 and 14, that's a string to, it's C string equals string. I would clip that. There is a chance yes, someone absolutely. would pass you Thank a you. trailing spaces. And then, and it seems like there you could just say else. Well, I guess if they pass blank, then you want the, but yes, C string, you would clip on assignment. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, in fact, and in my original thing, I was doing a clip as well. I just hadn't uh, hadn't really paid attention to it as we were going through and chatting. So one more, um, one more thing, yeah. it just yeah. it just bothers me because it it makes sense. But omitted returns true if it's not omitted, basically, right? Omitted to returns true if it is omitted. If so it if it's is not omitted, omitted, or not omitted. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So yes. No, I thought it returned true if it was. No, if, if it's there was omitted, something there, no, 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 no. I get it backwards. Is that it omitted? Looks right, not is omitted. It, take it. Right, right. If it's omitted, it's not there. So if it's not omitted, it's there. So if it's not omitted, then use it. Okay. So this is absolutely correct. All right, that makes sense. Okay, I got you. <clears throat> okay. I, I don't so, know why uh, that confuses me, but every once in a while, it does. Uh, not logic is stupid. It it blows up everybody's <laughs> head. That's just the nature of it. Okay, so uh, so we're using the folder and then making sure it has a backslash and then we are uh, uh, setting the mask to a default mask and this is this lining up of stuff is stupid at this point because it's no longer together. So I'm not going to worry about lining it up. 
Um, and I think that, and then finally, what I want to do is I'm going to have one additional um, line here. I am going to put in something to save the path because just in case it goes off and changes the folder in the process of crawling these directories, I don't know what you're going to do. When we're done, I'd like to come back to the same place. So what we've got to do is uh, to make use of this, we're just going to say save path equals path or long path if you want. I, I use path in my own testing and it seemed to be fine. Um, self and uh, the reason it jumped over there, I think is, I wonder if we're missing a dot here somewhere, maybe. Sometimes when you use um, if statements like this, it starts getting confused with the name. And it can also sometimes, depending upon your variable names and, and such things, it'll think that you are, um, uh, that you're actually doing the end of a block, that kind of thing. Anyway, uh, for some reason, it doesn't want to go to the proper indentation. So we'll just ignore that for the moment. So we'll go save path equals this. Of course, after we do our stuff, we're going to say set path back to the saved path. Uh, and then finally, we're going to say self dot, and then in, this is a, a new thing which we've uh, we've not talked about yet. Set process folder, and process folder is going to be an internal method that it just says here is one folder I would like you to process, please. Um, versus process, which is going to crawl everything. And I could have called this crawl because it's a directory crawler, uh, but I figured eh, it's called process, and um, this is what's going to actually do the work. But for now, right, let's guys, just I've, yeah. I've got to go. Uh, okay. Have a good one. I'll watch this bit back. Could do with this in new tools. But, uh, mm -hmm. but yes, very good. <laughs> For sure. Talk to you later. Andy. Later. Have okay, a good one. Bye. 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 Okay, so we'll come back to this in a second, but I want to talk about a little bit how, how this thing is going to be used. So to use this thing, you're going to have, um, as I mentioned, rather than having it just return back a queue of entries that then you have to go ahead and process and figure out. It, it means then, of course, you've got to define some kind of a queue. You've got to figure out how you do it. I just want it to give me the files. If I care about having a queue, I want it to be my queue in my structure, and I'll build up a list of files in a queue. Good, great. I just want you to tell me what's there. So at the very least, we want this thing to say, I want to take a file, much like we have take record in the ABC, um, ABC report and ABC process uh, uh, classes. We're going to say take a file, and it's just going to be a procedure. And it's going to have a string, a string uh, file, and that's going to be the file name. And it's also going to pass in just for your convenience, if you care, it's going to pass in the file queue with the directory info. So this is the current entry in the file queue that was fetched by the, uh, the directory command, which means you'll be able to access things like what's your date, what's your, what are your attributes, what's the time, et cetera. Uh, just that basic directory info so that I don't have to define something new to, to describe that. Uh, and consequently, <clears throat> uh, it, it, you can make use of it or not make use of it. It's com completely up to you, but it will pass it to you. Uh, so use it if you want. Um, it will also return, and I, and I decided to rough this in, but I'm not doing anything with it. It's going to give you the opportunity to return a byte. Uh, with the option to ignore it. Uh, maybe we eventually want to uh, might want to implement some uh, extra handling where it says, if you get an error on a file, then I want you to stop processing. And maybe that could be an option to the directory crawler to say, hey, as soon as you see some kind of an error, stop. But for now, uh, we just coded it this way because you don't want to change the, pr uh, uh, the prototypes for your virtual methods later because of course it breaks everybody's code because uh, they're expecting them to be that way, uh, virtual. So that's going to be a function uh, that gets called for every single file that's found that meets your criteria. And while we're dealing with files, why don't we take a uh, folder as well? Uh, so we're going to take folder and it's instead of being called file, it's called folder. Uh, and in fact, let's put this up here. Uh, and uh, what else is this going to take? So the neat thing with the folder is I realized as I was writing some tests that sometimes I'd say, here's a folder. And they go, oh, no, 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 I don't want to do anything with that folder. So I want to be able to say, okay, let's skip that one, go on to the next one. So what I said is, okay, fine, here's a folder, but I wanted a, a thing to basically say, take folder before files. So before you even process the files, I want you to take, yeah, take a look at this folder. Do you like this one? And then in this case, it's actually going to pay attention to this. If you return uh, 
um, uh, something other than, I think it's, uh, we'll take a look in a second, but I think if it was anything other than level benign, it would, uh, it would just proceed onwards. But if you return to anything else, it would say, ah, you want to, you don't want me to do this one. Um, and again, it's a virtual thing. And then once you've processed all the files in a particular folder, you could take the folder after the files. So this was, for example, let's say you've now processed all the files in a given folder, and now you want to uh, delete that folder, perhaps. Um, you, could, uh, you could do that. So this thing will not only process files, or if you just want to process folders, just tell me all the folders that'll blow me. This will work just fine. You could use either of those two methods. Uh, I don't think, I decided that there wasn't any benefit to, uh, uh, to returning the byte for that, but you know what, let's, let's go ahead and do that while we're at it too. No, no harm in an ignored return value. It'll be just fine. So, so these three things are what are going to allow us to make this do something interesting, something useful. So we're going to go ahead and add these in here. And we don't need any of those, but I am going to put that there. Code. Um, there's that. And there's that piece there. So this that's the basic structure of how the thing is going to be called, but now we actually have to make it do something. So let's go ahead and, and make it process this thing. So let's go first of all to the, back to this idea of processing a folder. And the processing a folder is going to be a protected method uh, so that you have to, and let's just go ahead and uh, let's go to public methods. Public virtual methods. Protected methods. There. Process folder. And this just basically says, go and look at this particular folder. Uh, it takes a string of the folder that it's supposed to look at, and it's protected. That's this whole job is just go do something. And we'll jump down to the bottom here, and I'm going to get rid of that. Now, we need it to do something. So we're going to process the folder, and I actually... Uh, broke this thing into into a couple of different pieces. Uh, so I ended up using a local map. Local maps are quite awesome because it says there's something that I want to do explicitly here. Um, sorry, uh, and uh, I want to do right here. And the two things I want to do is I want to be able to say process subfolders because what I found is um, that when I was processing the folders, it made the most sense to do the subfolders of a folder first because maybe I had to clear out some extra files deeper down before I actually got to this folders thing. Uh, and, and let's say, and then when I was done, I then wanted to potentially have this folder deleted. So it made sense to go and look at the subfolders before I looked at the, the local folder itself. So I processed the subfolders and to do that, it was just a procedure. Uh, and then I also had to then process this folder. Capital F. Uh, and then for the sake of this thing, doing some, uh, some operations, um, I found it was constantly calculating the name of the file, appending the folder uh, or having the file name appended to the folder so that it could pass it in somewhere, remember it, something. So I, I had an extra little helper function called full name and it would just say, okay, what's the name of this particular um, thing when you have the uh, percent file colon q q and you'll see in a while while i did it this way uh, i'm just passing it because each of these procedures is going to have their own copy of a file queue uh, and that, so i have to be able to pass into this thing here's the file queue that i want you to get the name from which you're going to append to the passed in folder name and remember again this folder name has got a backslash so it was just a handy thing so i wasn't constantly writing string concatenation stuff over and over or i could just say full name full name full name uh, I hate repeating myself in code if I can help it. Okay, so uh, full name, very simple. Looks just like 
that. It just says, please return the folder and whatever the file queue's file name was. That's all it does, really simple. Um, what does this thing do when it's processing a folder? Well, this is really simple too. And remember, I love to have each little chunk of code just tells a very simple story. So this is really easy. This is just going to say if self dot subfolders to if I'm processing subfolders at all, if I care, then we'll go ahead and process them. Process subfolders. Subfolders. And, and then go ahead and process this folder. So it tells a nice story. What does this procedure do? Does that. Oh, okay, good. Makes sense. I wonder how it does that. Oh, well, there's this full name thing. What does it do? Oh, just this one line of code. Oh, good. That's easy to understand. Well, what about if I actually want you to process folders? Well, let's take a look first of all at, um, we've got two procedures here, but let's take a look at process this folder first because it's just a little bit easier. Uh, neither of them is too hard because uh, again, I like to keep each procedure quite simple. Um, process this folder. Uh, to do any of this work, you need uh, da, 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 process up. Actually, you know what? I'm actually going to take a look. I'm going to take, I just realized the process this folder also has another local map. It, it dives even further down. So let's take a look at process uh, subfolders first. So process subfolders, where are we here? Right there. Needs to be able to load those folders into the standard thing. The directory command likes to put stuff into this queue. And this is the part that always drives me bonkers because I've always got to look up the name of all these stupid things. So I liked putting this into a class. And then when I'm processing subfolders, I want to have a return value for a variable. Uh, so I've got, duh, 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 where am I here? I just lost, there we go. Uh, take folder retval. Is that what I want? Is it here? Yeah, that's right. Um, and the first thing we have to do when we're processing subfolders, make some space here, is we want to say, go get the directory. So the directory command says, I need a queue of this kind. So we've got one of those queues. The next parameter is, where do you want me to search? Well, it's the folder and, and remember the folder's got the uh, the backslash on it. So we can just safely say the all mask, star dot star. I want everything because we're now searching for subfolders. We don't care about the file mask that was specified at this point because what we just want is the folders. We want all the folders because we're looking for subfolders. So just give me in this folder, what are all the folders that have, and you're basically saying, what are all the files that have the directory uh, the directory bit? So they, they specifically say, I am a directory. I want to find those ones. So great. So the first thing I do is I load those up and then I'm going to go ahead and I want to process these. So I, when I'm processing a, a little local queue like this, a lot of times I don't even bother with an index variable. I just say loop while records folder queue. And then I say get folder queue one, just get the first record. And then I say if band. So, and we're here we're doing some bit and wise operations, a folder queue dot attribute. So for the current file that I'm looking at, let's make sure that it's a directory because what you'll discover is when you do the directory call and you specify the directory mask, that doesn't say give me only directories. It says give me all files and directories. So I actually have to then confirm, is it a directory or not? So as long as it's a directory and it cannot be in the list of, uh, I don't want the folder queue dot name to be in the list of dot or dot dot, because those show up as folders in your, uh, in your directory queue. Uh, and you don't want to process those. There's no point because dot means here and dot dot means my parent. And if you start saying process here, okay, good. I'll process here again. Oh, I found here, process here again. Oh, I found here, process here again. It goes into an infinite loop and you're done. Computer blows up, earth comes to an end, all that fun stuff. So, uh, so we basically careful, just, there, yeah, yeah, I gotta be careful. <laughs> yeah, processing power, you never know. Tell an AI to do this, it might just get confused and use up all of our electricity grid. It um, could happen. <laughs> so, I'm basically saying, as long as this really is a directory and not just some other file, and it's not dot or dot dot, then what do I want to do with it? Uh, I want to process the files. Sorry, no, I'm in the wrong spot here. Uh, if that, then it's going to say, 
self process folder. Now you'll notice, hold on a second, process folder, we're inside a process folder. Yep, it's recursive, it's calling into itself. So it's gonna say process folder, uh, and here we're gonna use our full name of our folder queue, which is the thing we loaded. So it'll get the name out of that, that special file queue up here. So it gets the name from there. Uh, so we're gonna take the full name of that. And because this is a folder name backslash automatically there, and then this next little file, which is also a folder name, we have to make sure we pass in a backslash. So we're now just calling ourselves to say, okay, please go get another one. Please go get another one. Please go get another one. Every time it finds one of these things. Oh, and then the final thing we have to do is delete file queue. Can I mention that that's that's a very slow, it's proven, Jeff, Jeff Slar proved it, that that is just very slow to do. What's that? Because, oh, uh, deleting from the front of the queue, it moves oh, them all really? up. And uh, I mean, incredibly slow huh. that, I mean, I mean, your your options are to, uh, well, to, to loop through it in reverse and get the, yeah, the last one do that, yeah. or to just use an index variable and then. Uh, I could do but, that. But. The other thing is that that directory that you did also contains all the files that you would want for process files. So, and directory is kind of, a could be expensive depending on how many files there are. So you possibly could just do that once before you call. Um, uh, yes and no. The issue though, is that here I'm calling directory for all files. Whereas when I process the, act, the current folder, I'm going to always be processing it for a single mask. So I can't do a single directory call. I've got to do two. Yeah, I wonder if mask does affect directory. Uh, Absolutely. It yeah. Well, no, if, if I say mask, then it just won't give me the directories. You have to test that, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, um, uh, which is why I'm calling it twice. Okay. But, uh, and, and ultimately, it's only calling it twice per folder being processed. So unless you've got 8,000 folders, which you know, if you do, fine it's going to take a while it's just the nature of the beast um but i don't think most of us have quite that deep of a directory structure and the nice thing about this is you could plug in the api find first find next which possibly uh, yeah. could would be far faster uh, but yeah, we, i haven't tested it go ahead i'm sorry we, yeah it's fine yeah, yeah. And, and and the nice thing about this is you can extend this class to do whatever it needs to do uh, it's just i found this was a great starting point and uh, and because i've only applied it in one particular instance so far and i'm about to apply it in the second i find each time i apply something I go oh this class should also be able to do this and do that um the um uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so here we go. And uh, and as as Jeff, or sorry, Jeff, as uh, as um, Carl commented, um, the uh, we could have used a, an index here as well. Um, I've not. So, so this is interesting. The whole concept of the speed by deleting off the first record. Ultimately, it's really really fast. Yes, it's slower deleting the first record off versus deleting the last yeah. and such. But mm -hmm. when we're talking a hundred records, it's right. No, no difference there. But uh, exactly. hundred thousand. Yes. Enormous yeah. difference. And you don't really need the while records. You could just check for if error on your get. I could, uh, yeah. And so we could say records loop. is very fast. It just gets it from the queue control block. And if uh, error code does not equal no error, no error. Yeah. And right there. Lovely. So this is now our take the process subfolders procedure. Now let's take a look at our process folders procedure. For this one, uh, there's going to be a, a couple of similarities, but for the most part, it's actually got quite a bit different uh, personality. One thing we want to have with it is uh, we're going to say, um, well, we'll go ahead and uh, and code the basic logic of it first. We're going to say um, if self dot take folder before files. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, well, we're processing oh, processing this folder. Uh, and it looks like I spelled it wrong up here too. So we're processing. The, the first thing we want to do is say, hey, maybe we don't want to process this folder at all. And before we even touch the files, let's go ahead and let the virtual method, if it wants to, do something. So we're going to process this one and it's passing in folder. 
because that's what we're actually looking at. And if it equals level benign, then we go ahead and say, great, let's process the files, which we don't actually know how to do yet. We'll do that in a second. And then we're going to say, once we process the files in this particular folder, because you said it was okay, we're now going to take folder after files. Oh, folder. And remember that we did put a return value in there, but for now we're ignoring it. Um, because we don't know what it would want to do if it returned a wrong value. We just kind of put the methods in there with the return values just in case that would be meaningful in the future. Oh, oh that is something we did forget to do though. We forgot to come here and just say return level benign. So that's processing this folder. But of course, I told it to process files. So where are we going to do that? Let's create this local map. And is this what we want? Yep. And then we're going to say, now here's an interesting thing uh, it compared to my original thing. Um, my original thing didn't check the return value, but perhaps we want to do this. We want to say, um, yeah, let's do byte. It doesn't really matter, but just because we're thinking of it now, we'll do it now. Um, and it's proc. And we're not actually paying attention to it yet, but I just wanted to code that in so that I understand the process files is going to be calling tech take file. Take file does return a value, so maybe I want to uh, uh, have it return the value from a take file potentially. Although, actually, you know what? Well, maybe a process files isn't one file, it's processing all files, but sure, let's uh, leave it in there for now. And then what do we do when we're processing the files? Well, uh, we need, as we did before, uh, a queue uh, to load up the directory. So before we called it folder queue because we we're only loading up folders. In this case, we're calling it file queue. Uh, and then we are also having... I wonder, you know what, I just realized I coded this return value in, but I never ended up using it. So let's just take it out again. Uh, and then uh, we would need, uh, but we do need this one, I think, here. Because we're going to grab the value of that. Not sure what we're going to do with it yet. I don't think we're going to do anything with it yet. We're just coding it in, but that's fine. So what do we do? We want to process files in this folder. So we're going to say, fine, go load up my file queue. And what files do I want? I want this folder's files, except in this case, now we're using the actual mask from the class. Uh, because in this case, we only want the files that match the mask. And of course, the default is star dot star. And you'll notice that here I'm saying normal. And I just want to point out normal is actually zero. So up here is basically that same thing, which is why we have to filter and say, make sure it really is a directory entry because it's going to give me all the normal files anywhere. And so whether or not I should say normal here and whether or not I should even bother to say normal here, we could just say, you know what, it's just, just give me the files and uh, omit it entirely. But because I specified directory up there, I thought let's put it down here, but really it doesn't need to be there. And the next thing we're going to say is we're going to say loop while, uh, and while well, I was going to say while records queue, but in this case, we could actually just say loop. We could get file queue, comma, records, file queue, if error code is not equal, no error, and break. And then we have to say if not in range, because remember, we've got a before date we have to check. If not in range, uh, self dot before date. So this is the the, defor, the before date cutoff that we're considering. If it's zero, then we're not checking anything. So what we really want to see is, is it somewhere in a valid range of dates. Now, we could say one, which is logically correct, but really Clarion's dates start with four. So we're never going to see a date before four. So we could say four, one, whatever, as long as we're not saying zero. Uh, and if the date of the file is uh, file q dot date minus one. So as long as it's before this date. You need, you need those parameters flipped that uh, you're, you you want to compare the file q date. Nope. To, to four. Nope. No. Oh. Nope. Oh, I see what you're. Okay. Yes. Yes. I see. 
That's one. Uh, yeah, I know. It took, I, I scratched my head for a couple of minutes over there. I go, which foot? Oh, this is the way to do it. Yeah. So as long as the before date that I'm choosing is ends up being somewhere after the beginning of Clarion's date sphere, its calendar, and the file's date minus one. So if the um, uh, if the file's date was the before date, uh, then it would uh, it would uh, fit just fine because the before date was between four. Is that right? Hold on. Have we got this well, backwards now? If it's and in that range, I it's tested good. this. You yes. have a problem with before data zero, unless you. And perhaps we're, I, I, and I do this, we all do this. We try and write a really clever bit of code, and then we, we sit there scratching our head to come up with it. And then every time we look at it, we go, is that right? And that ultimately is bad practice. So we're going to, we're going to fix it right now. We're just not going to write it this way. We're going to say, if self dot before date does not equal zero, that means we want to use this thing. Then we say, if file q dot date um, is less, less than self dot before date, or sorry, if it equal, if it's greater than or equal to or date cycle. So if we care about the before date and the file's date is after equal to or after the before date, or should we just have like that? I was trying to remember how I interpreted before date. So before this date, so if you give it a date of say today and I want to be before today, then I want the date to be equal to less than the date. So if the date is less than, so if it's less than the before date, then I want it to do it. So if it's greater than or equal to, I want it to skip it, go on to the next record. But that's not quite going to work because I want to go down to the delete. So what we'll do here is... Um, hey, people probably think it's inclusive on or before this date's what I want. I want it up until the 30th, 31st, or I want... I want to see all my signups before the 25th of March. Yeah. They really think on or before, but. Yeah. And, and, and that's why I say that's, this is why I explicitly say, yeah, I figured before this date, you know, it means literally before this date. If it's that date, well, that's not before by logical definition. If somebody wants to interpret before as on or before, well, that's a logical mistake. Um, so this is the the entire thing and that we don't want to cycle here. What we want is we want to actually process the file because here, um, why is it doing that? Is it doing that because I've got this stupid thing here? No, it's doing it. There's something else coming into play here. Loop, get, if not error code break. No, it's right there. Okay, good. Okay, so if it does that, then we want to say take file retval equals self dot take file. Full name, file Q, file Q. So what am I doing here? Uh, so basically I'm saying if we don't care about the before date or uh, the before date is not okay. So if it this is actually worth doing here. So if the date is zero or it's not zero, so this is not necessary. So if it's zero, it's just going to go ahead and do it. If it's not zero, then we need to check it. Is the file date greater than or equal to the before date? If it is, then, um, then go ahead and process the file. Or actually, and I think in this case now we want to do it that way. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just looking at it. Yeah. Uh, good. I think, we, and, and the reason I did that is because I wanted it to drop down and do the delete regardless. I take exception to the that meth, that code. It's not typical, but anyway, it works, but but it's not <laughs> typical. The thing about it is you can't just cycle anywhere you want. You want to go insert some new code to go, oh, wait, if this that's is, and, if and this is such and point. such, oh, I just want to cycle. Yeah, okay. And, so, so, and, 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 I, and I'm willing to, I'm willing to say, yeah, you know what? I think it's, it's a bit brittle. Uh, it, it is error prone. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go um, uh, X. Uh, it's long. Uh, let's 
let's save a micro milli blippy second there so it doesn't initialize that. And I'm going to say loop x equals one to records q or file q. And then we're going to get record number x. And then when we get to the end, we're just going to say free file q. Actually, we don't even have to free it because it's local to here, so it'll get freed automatically. I mean, the way you had it, I guess you could have deleted it as soon as you pass the if error check. And because you don't, you know, I could have even while deleted, it, it is still to there. Delete, but I wouldn't but, need it to delete. But this is tradition. Yeah, that's fine. We'll do it this way. Uh, uh, so we'll just go ahead and loop through. And this actually reads nicer anyway. So there you go. Um, and given that, let's go ahead and do that same thing up here just for fun. Um, that uh, and it's folder queue, folder queue, oh, folder queue. Uh, and then we are going to uh, do this to X and we're going to get rid of that. We're going to grab our X variable from down here, put it up here too. Um, and then we're going to now process the subfolders. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and X and now we don't need this. And then we can actually change this thing here if we want to here. We can say if not that, then cycle. If unless that, then cycle. There. Doesn't that read pretty? I like that a lot more. Good. I just comment the way I, the way I got around. You're right. The the all mask thing for a directory you need. So I did all mask, and then when in the file loop, I used uh, Clarion's match wild, and right. so instead of to, to have one directory, so you're relying that match wild does work exactly like directory. I don't know that it does. <clears throat> Uh, I think so. And then uh, eventually got into, well, I want multiple masks. Well, now it's, you could do multiple directories or you can use a uh, match. So right. That's what and, I did. And, and if you want multiple masks, masks, you could just say, well, give me everything and I'll apply whatever mask, you know, whatever match I want when yes. it gives me each file. That's the other option. But that's something we could do to extend it instead of having a single mask, right? Like right now we've specified the single mask in here. Da, 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 da. But if we wanted to, we would have a queue of masks potentially. But if we're doing that, then we we need another facility to say add a mask, add a mask, blah blah blah. So it gets a bit more involved. Okay, so here we go. So now it knows how to process files. It knows how to process folders. Let's see if it actually works. Uh, let's see if it compiles. Ooh, that's even better test. If it compiles, it's going to work, right? Oh, geez, it's not going to work because it didn't compile. No matching prototype process folder. Um, should this be called as process folders? Okay, the start folder. Process. The self that start folder. Oh, you know what it is? No, I, yeah, I, that's what I need. Self dot start folder. And you'll notice in nowhere am I ever calling it self dot start folder other than this one place, uh, which is why. Uh, when it, when process just says, I'm just going to start here and just go on from this point. So it doesn't really need to remember it because it never refers to it again. So it's fine still to keep it as, as a local uh, class variable, but uh, I find it interesting that it really is never used anywhere else in the class. It's just passed in as a parameter in this one place. Which is why in my original example that I'd done, uh, I never had... I had the the concept of the mask and the before date and the subfolders too. I sort I stored them here because I used them elsewhere, but I never used the folder, so I didn't even remember the folder in the class data. I just passed it around as parameters. So, so let's try and compile this again. Now we get oh, we only save one error. Oh, that might be more. Okay. Um, interesting. Just remove the word procedure. I think the problem is that. I think somehow I managed to oh. get it bumped over. Yeah, that got indented somehow. And then prototype, oh, you do need that F normal. You do need a parameter, I thought it was omittable, it's not. 
And if that's the case, then perhaps I will uh, explicitly add it there because that way then there's more sense as to, well, why is it checking for just directories? Of course, a person is going to come back and go, well, why are you asking for normal files if you only want directories? So maybe that only makes it worse. I don't know. Um, unfortunately, uh, it still returns uh, non-directories. So we have to filter them here. Good. <clears throat> All right, now do this compile again. Function did not return. Ah, yes, that's right. So we have to go. Uh, well, we could return level and I. Uh, we don't really, we've not defined what we might want to do with these take file return values. So we might want to have a, a, a local variable or a class variable that remembers the last error number or the last might not a queue that remembers all the errors or et cetera. So for the time being, because we haven't got a good reason to make it one way or another, we're not going to make it like anything. We'll just put in uh, enough stuff so that it can have those in the basic uh, virtual methods. And then if we eventually start using it later, great. So now it should compile clean. Yay, compile clean. Now, if we want to actually use this thing, let's see what happens here. Let's go DC. Um, directory crawler, and of course it's, we have to, if we just did this, we could do this here and just go DC dot process there, there are, we got, look at that exception. Does anybody know why? Come on, come on. Trick question. I know exactly why. C's Violent. in the symbols. Yeah. ABC LinkedIn. There, it worked. We're done. Bye, everybody. <laughs> of course, it's not doing anything. How do we make it do something? We have to use our virtual methods. So let's go ahead and uh, just for fun, let's uh, let's take um, let's take all three of these just for something to do. Class. So we are now deriving this class. And we're saying I want one just like that, but I want to do some of my own stuff here. And this is going to be a derived method. We could oh, we could still say virtual if we want to, but it's best to say derived because even though virtual is, is acceptable, if somebody changes that virtual method in the base class and you're saying virtual here, the compiler is not going to say, hey, buddy, you thought you were deriving something and you're not anymore. You just started something new and your code doesn't work and you don't know why. But if you use derived, then the Clarion, the compiler says, hey, hey, they changed this in the base class. You can't derive something that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, and then you know to go in and fix your program. Uh, because theoretically, the person who wrote the class shouldn't change these kinds of things after the fact, but they always do. And especially if it's you writing both the base class and the derived class, then you're likely to change it along the way. And it's nice when the compiler tells you you made a mistake. So we're going to have these three things and then we're going to just do like this, dc dot, c dot. Actually, let's go return level nine. So we can still just compile us. See, oh, no, it didn't like that. But it didn't, oh, we missed the end, end statement here. Oh, not really? Ah, right. That's what I get. I sure wish Clarion would let me do this. It really irritates me that I have to edit every single one of these things. Our program works again. Yay, we're done. Bye, everybody. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if it actually did something we could see, though? <laughs> be kind of useful. Okay, <laughs> so let's start with, just for fun, uh, let's just say, show me a list of files. So let's just go stop. File there. Oh, what's this? Oh, clay run. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Let's ignore that. Oh, directory crawler.clw. Oh, and there's the INC. Uh, there's our example program. And there's a CW proj and another exe and a CLW or SLN. There's a solution file and there's a cache of something. And hey, that was fun. It then gave us all the files we wanted. Um, instead of that, let's um, say do it over here. Um, let's say stop folder. 
That's actually the idea. There it is. That's the folder we're processing. This one right here. And the lovely. Works. And now just for fun, let's change this to say before folder. After folder. Before folder, after folder. Good. And what if we said process? And what do I want to process? Let's go DC dot mask equals start out CLW. Okay. Let's go folder after. Let's see what we get here. Oh, there we go. Try again. Oh, sorry. I keep, I keep hitting the wrong keys here. There we go. Okay, folder before. That's the one we're going to do. Here's the file. There's our CLW. Here's another file. There's our CLW. Ignore. And then there's our folder after. Bingo. Works just fine. Now you can make it do anything you want it to do. And the nice thing is, let's say, for example, in this file, I didn't want to see the whole name. I could say dir info dot name. Clip it maybe because I have a feeling it's a string and not a string and not a C string. So there's before, there's our file, but you notice it doesn't have the path on it anymore because we just grabbed the name directly out of the, uh, the directory info. So you don't even necessarily need to parse off the, the folder name to make sure it's right. Bingo. What do you think, John? I like it. Well, I'd like to, I'd like it to have uh, in the folder. It might be useful to have subfolder name and level, so that if you're trying to build a tree, so that that you know. Oh, um, that's a that's a good idea. Yeah. I like that. Ooh, and yeah. Same that's thing a good with take one. file. Maybe so you'd call it well subfolder. Then in take file, I suppose I'd start with that dir info, and then you have full file name comma. Well, I guess folder name, comma, subfolder. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, it becomes a little more involved. Um, uh, so, um, and one could do that. You could have, um, uh, you could have uh, uh, a string um, containing folder. I don't know. Um, and then. Um, I just paste a link to a long. screenshot of a directory that has. If you're gonna in the uh, comments, that uh, that if you're, it's very sometimes useful to have levels and subfolders. Yeah, no, I, I like that idea. Okay, uh, so we now need to tweak these here, there, and there, and we, oh, I can forget to put it here to uh, there and there and here. We're gonna go process files uh, folders subfolders. Here we go. Um, the, 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 you work without a net. I would, I would have made a copy. <laughs> Why in the world would I do that? I know. Jeez, I, you I, just I, like, I refactor oh, okay. code constantly, all day, every day. Yes, but, I, I do but you do check it in. Uh, no, no, I don't. No, not for this kind oh, of change. I just do it. <laughs> Why would I check it in? It's only going to take me five minutes to do it and fix it, so I just do it. Uh, sometimes uh, tying yourself onto the safety harness is just a pain in the ass, and especially if I know I'm not going to fall. Um, now, certainly, oh, oh, that's what Control Z is for. If you got to yeah, go back, exactly. you just hold that button down and just let it go all the way back. Okay. And you also have under file, you have revert to, you have reload file. Yeah, you do that as well. Yeah. Uh, well, um, you know. although every time you build it, it saves files, so you, it's kind of hard to revert to. Um, so, um, what we're going to do is in the process subfolders, this folder, okay, where did my, uh, did it, here, this one. So now we're going to say, this is folder. So process this folder, uh, take folders before. And so mm -hmm. if I'm going to do this, this is a little weird because, okay, so process folder, I'm going to do this here. Um, what I need to do is I'm passing in the folder. Is that right? Yes. So here I'm saying I want to process a folder and I'm passing in the folder I want to process. And then when I'm doing subfolders, 
So I'm saying process this folder. So this is the folder I'm processing, but you want me to have the containing folder. I don't even know what the containing folder, I'd have to parse it off at this point. Uh, so we're gonna have a level being passed in. So we need this level somewhere uh, to be passed as part of our process. So when we process a folder, we're going to be processing in a level at the very, very least. And, um, and perhaps we could say containing folder, pass that in here. Yeah, sure. Let's pass it in here. Well, sub your current folder is your full path to the folder. So I would call it subfolder. Just we want to know. Yeah, but this is the folder you're processing. Yes, the, that's the full path yeah. to the folder. So the containing folder is basically the parent folder. Maybe not call it parent folder. Oh, I was thinking subfolder. So like OBJ is the subfolder under if you're recursing. That's not what I'm talking about here. If I'm recursing, then if I'm recursing down to OBJ, then it's gonna, what, I'm, what you're gonna see for the folders, you're gonna see, you know, whatever my root directory OBJ, and then the containing folder is without the OBJ. Because the folder I'm, I'm like, if we're, if we're dealing with it, let me just do this here. Um, so we have uh, uh, test uh, is our main folder, and then we have um, OBJ. When I call this thing, the first parameter is going to be, you know, whatever C colon test back OBJ. The second parameter is going to be C colon test, like that. And actually, we can do like this here. And the level might be zero or something, or actually it would be one, because it's one below wherever we started. So assuming we started in test, test is zero. OBJ is going to be one level below that. Now, what I was thinking was passing in OBJ as the second parameter to let me know that the subfolder being loaded is OBJ because I want to avoid that or maybe, a, yeah. Yeah, but the whole point is that you're, you're saying, here's a folder, I want you to take this folder. It is the OBJ folder I care about. That's the one you're currently processing. And then if you care, you know which you know, parent folder OBJ is contained in, which you could always derive by just taking that thing off. But I'm saying, why force the person to take it off if I can give it to them directly? So the first parameter yeah. is always a fully qualified path to the thing you are working on right now, yes. whether it's a folder or file name. And then these and these extra things are new things of well, here's your containing folder if you care. Although I don't even know that this is all that necessary. This I'm thinking but subfolder. Then I want to know OBJ is what's being loaded, and it's level two. And then oh, release, then oh, OBJ yeah. release and releases the subfolder and it's level three. Okay, I see what you're getting at. Um, hmm. Because then it's similar to when we're passing in the uh, uh, for take file. Where's our take file here? Da, 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 da. Uh, for take file, it's passing in this directory info. And from the directory info, you can get just this, the strict file name itself which is kind of like the subfolder you're currently in. Mm -hmm. Same concept. Um, oh, and I don't know we need the, we don't need that here. I wonder, take folder before files pass in the queue and that would have the directory. That's, I guess that's the other option. Yeah, we could pass that in. Yeah. Yeah, so sure. That would, okay. Yeah, I like that. That would give we'll you that, that subfolder instead. name plus date. Yeah, the, yeah, folders yeah, do have no, dates. No, good point. Yeah, absolutely. No, very good point. Okay, so we will uh, change that one piece there. We will change the piece here. And you actually do have attributes too. You, know, you, yeah, you haven't, exactly. you haven't uh, allowed searching for hidden or system, but yep, you could, yep. of no, course. I like and, that. And uh, it would be useful to know it's a hidden folder. I don't want it. I was but thinking do we wouldn't need files. this, but you're absolutely right. We could potentially need this, so we will pass that in. Okay, uh, so back to here. So we are processing before files, after files, take file. Um, oops, yeah, there we go there. Uh, so folder, string, folder, yeah, this is gonna be level process folder. Um, and we need long level. So where do I define process folder? Up here somewhere, where is it? Local map. Where's my local map for process folder? 
wasn't it in the class? Oh, oh yes, it is. Sorry, it was process this yeah. folder I was thinking of, uh, but uh, but that's fine. It, 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 so it's here. Um, so process folders, process subfolders. So here, we're when we're processing these subfolders, we're going to say full name, comma, oh, back and backslash, comma, and then we want to have a file or folder queue. And then it's uh, level plus one or depth. There, depth is a much better word than level. Depth. Depth, depth. Depth, depth. Depth, 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 depth. There we go. Okay, back here. So when we're processing, okay, so we're processing the folder. We're finding more folders and we're saying, um, passing that in with the folder queue and the folder depth. And we actually don't need that there. That one doesn't go there. It's just the depth because it's this one. We're just saying the folder, get the folder. Here's your, here's your current depth. Um, when we start out, we have to say you're zero. Uh, and now when we take the folders, that's where we're going to have dot take folder is what we want. So take folder before files. That one's fine. That one's fine. Now this one is going to say process this folder. So if it's this folder, we need it to be, ah, oh, we don't have the folder info here at this point. So we're going to have to figure that out. And then it's level. Oh, sorry, depth. Depth. And that's where we run into a little bit of a problem because if we're taking this folder. It's already been passed into us as a folder name, but we don't have the folder info. But when we're processing the subfolders, we do have it. Oh, what a hassle. The, the, the key thing becomes when we're processing subfolders, I could arrange to pass it down to, to sort of hold on to it and pass it down. But when we process the very first root folder, we don't, we never derive that from a directory call. So we don't have all of that info. Yeah, you could uh, just pass an empty one, I suppose, to find one, and clear it and because it wouldn't be used. Well, you hope not. But, but let's say, no, I, but I think it could potentially be necessary. So let's say there's a temp folder and you say, I want to go process that temp folder. And when I'm done, I want to, uh, uh, to do something to it. So we pass in, you know, at the very least, we'd have to set the name and parse that out and such. Um, but, um, well, you know what I could probably do here? Um, this might work here. Um, okay, so when we're processing this folder, uh, it was, <laughs> I thought it was ironic that process subfolders and process files were the both, both had directory queues, but the only one that didn't was process this folder, but now we're now going to add one here. So we're going to have a folder queue, uh, and then we're going to um, say, because I just realized we're given the folder, so we should be able to just use it as is, possibly without the backslash. Um, it might work even with the backslash though. Uh, so we're going to say, um, directory just like this one up here but the difference is we have to say oh, we're still going to have to to uh to parse that out to get rid of that backslash and split it off aren't we because we have to use the mask of this thing itself where is process this folder called i can't actually remember. process this folder is is after it processes uh, the, all the subfolders and it says, I want to do everything for um, uh, for the current folder I've been asked to process. It starts oh, out at the very file. top. No. Yeah. Okay, so it starts off at the, very t at the very first thing. It says, just process a folder. Here's a folder I want you to process. Um, so it's the, it could be the starting folder. It could be a subfolder. or well, It is the starting folder at this point. Uh, absolutely. But when you call sub process folder, am I supposed to be doing subfolders? Okay, we'll do those first and then process this folder. And I'll process this folder does it says before I process, where is it here? So it says um, 
before I have to, uh, before I actually process any files, let's give it a chance to, to, to take the folder before the files, then let's process the files, then let's take the folder after the files. So all I need is I need this extra little copy of a folder queue thing. And because the mask is supposed to be the containing folder and then the mask, and the mask in this case is the, the directory name, uh, I can just have folder here. Yeah, I might need it. To, yeah, I might well, need to take the backslash off, maybe. Um, and you might get the period and double period. Yeah, yeah, um, but again, I well, I don't think so. But let's check. Let's go ft debug q. Um, I'll have that in my debugging here. Um, folder q. Let's see what I have in there after I get that after that call, and then we should be able to just pass this in. So let's just check to see if this works here. We're at, we just hit two o'clock. We gotta wrap this up before too long. So we're going to go here, uh, include stdebug.inc. And then we need to open stdebug.equ. And we're gonna save that in ptest.directory crawler stdebug.eq. Uh, and let's just call it DC there, and we're debugging. Good. Oops, like the way. Only six errors after all that debugging. It's amazing. Okay. Oh yeah, we need this directory queue here. Uh, okay, so uh, we now need to make sure we do something similar to that other spot. So let's take that logic. Um, and I like that as a starting point. Okay, so we're going to do, um, hmm, it's an interesting thought. I'm wondering whether I could have it, I better do that just like that. Okay, so we're gonna say um, start uh, folder queue. And it's the, where is it here? Find me one of those folders. Start folder queue. What am I looking for here? Where is it? There it is there. That's what I want. Good. Um, so we're going to do the same thing in that other one we just did here. We're going to say directory. Uh, start folder queue. Start self dot start folder. Um, file. The directory file directory f ff colon underscore ff on is it ff yeah. yeah ff there we go thank you sir uh okay i think that should do it and then we can pass in start folder q now is it gonna like that anymore same number of errors. Why didn't it like that process folder? Uh, probably because process folder is not supposed to have that directory queue thing. So let's add that as a parameter. Da, 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 da. Start process folder that that and long depth. Yeah. So we're gonna grab all these parameters and bring them to process folder here. Now let's see if it likes this any better. Um, hey, look at that. Almost done. Uh, process folder. And here we can just say folder queue. Because it's right there. All right, let's see if this works. It built, yes, let's see if it runs. What do we get? And what's in there in the folder? Nothing's there. So it looks like it didn't do it. So what I want to try doing is I want to try stripping off. Let's go left. That. Um, and then we're going to say length clip folder. Length clip folder minus one there. 
And because we need to do that, we're gonna have to do the same thing in the other one as well. Um, directory, where are we here in our first one? And I, I do wanna have that done in both spots. Okay, so we're going to say this here is gonna be there and there. There we go. So we got rid of the backslash and now we have our directory crawler example is our, uh, is the name of the folder it's processing and directory craw, short name and, uh, and it is a directory. So that's what I would expect to see in there. It's just proper attributes. Good. I usually have little methods, path, no BS, path with BS. Yeah. yeah. Just for that. <laughs> And usually if I'm expecting a, B, a backslash on the end, I will always name the uh, variable with a BS on it. For example, folder BS, right. just to remind myself that that is supposed to have a backslash. And then one final thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to do um, uh, folder uh, der info procedure uh, that Dir info. I think that's what I called them in all of my parameters. Just that dir info. Yeah. Um, and there. And I'm just going to create this little local procedure. And this job is very simply um, to do this directory call. Directory. Um, oh, I need needed folder as well. Uh, a string folder. And because this one is exactly like this one. No, where is it? I had them a second ago. Folder Q, this folder, yeah, that's the one I want here. Should be exactly like this. There. So folder Q, and we're instead of folder Q, we're gonna say direct info. Folder, okay, good. That's all it needs to do. Because um, that way I can come back down to here and I don't have to do this, all this stupid string logic both times. I can just say folder dir info uh, and then I want my start self dot start folder and my uh, start folder queue. Much better. Yeah, I like that a lot more. Um, and then I can do something similar to that when I'm done and process this folder, I'm just gonna do that exact same thing, except in this case, it's just folder Q and it's folder like that. So it just simplifies those calls so I don't have to do them. I don't really love the name, Maybe I should change the name. Get folder dir info. There. Lovely. Okay, now does it still work? It does. Look at that. Before there's a CLW, a CLW, and after. Yay, it works. We're done. All the refactoring done. It took longer than five minutes, I have to admit. It took us closer to 20, but we were digressing a little bit. Excellent. And where can we get the code, Mike? Well, I, I'll, I'll put it up in a repo uh, and uh, and I will uh, uh, look for um, uh, look for Boxsoft, uh, or sorry, uh, yeah, boxsoft.github.com slash dirinfo, or directory crawler. So it'll be, but uh, but I will create a new repo for it, and I'll uh, I'll make sure that it is made available, and we'll put it into the notes at some point. Yeah, send me a link. Okay, shall do. Cool, cool. Yeah, it was a bit of serendipity. It's, it's like, hey, you're doing that? Cool, I did <laughs> no that. No kidding. Let's talk you... about that. That's fun. <laughs> 
you did all the stuff I didn't want to do. I didn't yeah. want to spend all well, the time writing this well, thing. And, and here's the thing: I don't, I don't mind writing this code, but I don't. I, I was sick of the fact that every time I had to do a directory thing, I was like, "Oh God, I got to understand this thing." And oh yeah, that's right. The stupid files come through with the directories. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, how am I going to do this recursion? Recursing's hard. Yeah, I like writing it, but I don't. Have, I don't want to spend time trying to debug it. And then okay, there. now one thing that's we didn't exactly test here is where I was. Uh, we didn't test the um, the recursion side and we didn't test the levels, but I'll, I'll just run a couple of quick tests here locally and, and confirm that it works. And once I confirm that it works, then I'll go ahead and paste it up and I'll send you the link. Cool. That is perfect. Yay. That's what we need. You can't hear me clap, so it doesn't matter. That's all right. Pat little patty pie claps. Patty, patty, patty claps. claps. <laughs> oh, here. <laughs> Nice. Oh, there we go. Hey. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> what if I can match this up? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Christopher had a comment. He says that's why I use from and through dates when we when you were talking about the before dates or something. It was a while ago. Yeah, and, and that's ago. a good point is we may only want files after. It's strange processing directories. Normally when I'm processing them, I want everything before a date, but but you're right. There it could be situations I only want files after a date. So so maybe I will, uh, I'll adjust that so that it's uh, from date to date. Yeah, I like that. That's what I've recently done as I was looking for stuff in the last 30 days. Yeah, sure. yeah. That'll work. All right, easy, there you go. easy to make that change. And with that, we are done for the day. Thanks, guys. That was very cool. Yeah. I just have to wait for the code, then I can I can use it, and people can choose everything, or they can choose this. That's it. Thanks, Delphi. Right. Good stuff. Yeah. All right. Uh, next week, regular week, there's webinars all week long. Going at this Monday, open webinar Wednesday, Net Talk Thursday, and you're going to be here next Friday. Are you? Uh, I think I will. You be, said yeah. you were. Yeah, should be. So I'm going to be, like gone gonna be gone. The last April, the, the last Friday of April and the first Friday of May, I am not here. Oh, okay. That's all. Yeah. Ways away. Good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Carl, for your input. And with that, we will say goodbye. Um, goodbye. Toodles Just all. Just like that. Bye.